Hey there guys, welcome to the video. My name is Pushpinder Gill and in this video, this is actually the third video on quadratic equations, uh, quadratic functions, right? And in this video, we're going to be talking about uh, some of the some of the behavior of uh, some of the behaviors of uh, quadratic functions in terms of its roots that when are the roots real when are the roots imaginary when are the roots uh, equal and all that so suppose in the previous video towards the end we actually talked about a formula which actually gives you the equation for the roots which is equal to minus b plus or minus under root b square minus 4ac over 2 times a now, if you would have noticed, the value of alpha was this, right, uh, and the value of the other root was actually this. So, if you would have noticed, uh, noticed, you would have seen that this is the only thing, this is the only feature which differentiates both the roots. That is b square minus 4ac. And we're going to call this as the discriminant because this is the guy who differentiates this root from this root because you have plus this and you have minus this rest everything else is same so this is the discriminant denoted as t now understand here now if so i'm going to talk about three cases first case if the discriminant is zero that means b square minus 4ac is zero another way to put it b square is equal to 4ac another way to put it discriminant is zero then what is going to happen? The roots are going to be simply minus b plus or minus root of 0 over 2a, which means the roots, both of the roots are going to be equal to minus b over 2a, which means there is going to be a single root. That equation is going to have a single root. And that means the graph will touch the x axis. So the graph will touch the x-axis or will cross the x-axis not cross just touch only once because you have a single root so this is how your graph is going to look like it's going to touch your x-axis only once only once not more than once at all so it's going to be like this it's going to be like this right so one of the example of such equation is a perfect square you know because at the end of the day, your graph is going to be a perfect square. So, one of the examples would be y is equal to x square, isn't it? This is how it looks like. Just touches. y is equal to x minus 3 whole square. y is equal to x plus 4 whole square. So, you can see that this equation has a single root that is x equals to 3. This equation has a single root that x equals to minus 4. So, this, this is what happens when you have a single root. And that your single root is something which is real. Now, why do I know it's real? Because it touches the x-axis. Something, any root which touches the x-axis is going to be a real root. Right? So, this is a root which actually touches the x-axis. Then, what if that the value of discriminant is greater than 0? Which means that b square minus 4ac is greater than 0. Which means that b square is greater than 4ac. Then what is going to happen? Then you, your roots are actually going to be something like this is equal to a minus b. There's going to be plus something and there is going to be a minus something, isn't it? Because this value is something which is a, a positive number, right? This value is something which is a positive number, which means you're going to have two distinct roots. So what are you going to have? You're going to have two distinct roots and your graph will touch the cross the x-axis twice. It's going to cut it twice like this. It's going to cut it twice like this, right? So in this case, you have two distinct roots. And your roots are real because the graph is touching the x-axis, is crossing the x-axis. Another thing is when the value of t is less than 0, which means b squared minus 4ac is less than 0 which means b square is less than 4ac. So in that case, if I talk about your alpha and beta, you're going to have minus b plus under root of something negative over 2a. And then you're going to have minus b minus under root of something negative over 2a. 
Now, what is under root of something negative? That is something which is imaginary, right? Because under root of minus 1 is i, which is actually a complex number. So, if you don't know anything about complex number, go ahead and watch our complex number videos. Now, in this case, you're going to have two imaginary roots. So, you're going to have two imaginary roots. And your graph is going to hang in the air. It's not going to touch the x-axis at all because your roots are imaginary. Fine. So, suppose you're understanding what I'm trying to say here. And your roots are going to be conjugates of each other. When I say conjugates, if one of the root is 2 plus 3i, other root would actually be 2 minus 3i. Because at the end of the day, it's just plus something and minus something which is making the difference. Right? So, these are the conjugates. a plus ib and a minus ib are conjugates of each other. Right? So, in this case, you are not going to have no roots at all. Only imaginary roots. So let's say, for example, I have this equation that x squared plus x minus 9 is equal to y. So I want to actually analyze. So what is the value of a? 1. What's the value of b? 1. What's the value of c? Negative 9. So what's b squared minus 4ac? That is 1 minus 4 times a times c, which is actually 1 plus 36, which is 37. So since this is greater than 0, that means I'm going to have two distinct real roots okay let's pick up another one let's say i have the value of uh, x square plus 7x plus 6 is equal to y so i have x is equal to 1 sorry a is equal to 1 b is equal to 7 c is equal to 6 b square minus 4ac that is 49 minus 4 into 1 into 6 greater than 0 two distinct real roots let's pick up another one Let's say 4ac, let's say 9x square plus 7x plus 6 is equal to y. So a is 9, b is 7, c is 6, b square 49 minus 4 into a into 6 less than 0. I'm going to have two imaginary roots, right? Okay, let's see another one. Let's say x square plus 4x plus 2, right? is equal to y. So I have a equals to 1, b equals to 4, c equals to 2, b square, b square minus 4 into, okay, a into c greater than 0. Two real distinct roots. Fine? So I suppose you're understanding what I'm trying to say here, guys. And uh, thank you very much for watching this video, right? Uh, in the next video, we're going to be talking about various uh, values uh, various transformations of a b and c right and uh, various lines of symmetries and everything we're going to be talking a whole lot about quadratic equations in the next video as well so thank you very much for watching this video this is going to be our e website address that is perfect-course.com don't forget to explore it and uh, this would be our facebook page give us your valuable like follow us on twitter and this would be our email address don't forget to send us your valuable feedback so thank you very much for watching i'll see you in the next